close your eyes and watch your breath. Give the mind a place to settle down, because you're trying to train the mind so that you can depend on it. And if you can't tell it to stay in one place, it's a sign you can't really depend on it. So you've got to learn how to keep it right here. Because the mind, if it's not trained, can do all kinds of things and lead you in all kinds of directions. This is why we have to give it a training. When we talk about taking refuge in the Buddha, well, what it means is training the mind in the qualities of the Buddha. The same with the refuge in the Dhamma, the refuge in the Sangha. We take their example and then we train our minds in line with their example. The Buddha and the Sangha are people who found true happiness. The Dharma is their list of recommendations for how they found it. And so we want to take their lessons, take the knowledge they've gained and apply it to our lives. Of course, we have to test it to make sure they, what they say really is true. But we also have to make ourselves worthy of, of judging these things. Our minds really do have to be solid to see okay, what really is true happiness. Because it's easy to go after some things and think they're going to be happy and then later on be disappointed. It's this delusion of ours that we've got to overcome. So it means we have to learn how to step outside ourselves a bit, take the training on. The parts of the training we like, parts of the training we don't like, we just stick with them to see what effect they have on the mind. and to turn ourselves into good judges so that we can be reliable both in the happiness we have and in, the ha and in our ability to judge that happiness. That's when you have a re refuge inside. You can live in the world and the world won't lead you astray. You can live by yourself and yourself won't lead you astray. Because the important part, the mind here, has been well trained. 